I see that we're not quite there yet. Even though I see six people that look like me. We're not quite there yet. There's an old rule in the history of Flint, a hidden, an unwritten rule, Mr. President, that if you have a white mayor, council people, there should be a black president. Vice versa. Even in the Western days of John Wayne, if you stole a horse, there was an unwritten rule. You would be hung. Flint is trying to come back together. A few years ago, a few months ago, we talked about the emergency manager. And I heard him say today that Flint is not ready for him to leave. Because we can't handle our business, Mr. President. And Mr. President, you said you've been around here some 25, 30 years, man. So evidently you was here when the chip was up, and now you're here when the chips are down. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a businessman, I'm a pastor, and I have to observe my flock. And every now and then, I check the money. And if certain entities are not doing what they're supposed to do, I question it. And I don't have a charter, because I'm the pastor. I not only pastor the money, I pastor the person, I pastor the church. I'm the flock. I'm, I'm the under shepherd. So when the emergency manager was being discussed some months ago, some of you all sat back and rolled over and said, come on in, master. And then one council person even had the audacity to say, well, in order for us to get through this storm, this individual will be the leader. And there's six of y'all that look like me. In no way, and I, I, I like this fella, but he'd been there too long. We had a great opportunity to give somebody else an opportunity. You have a senior councilman, Dr. Neely, Amen. been around a long time, but we still haven't got there. But in that passage, it also say, woe unto you that don't do what you're supposed to do. And that goes for me too. But if we're going to get the Flint back together, we got to come together, people. Amen. I'm sick and tired and sick and tired of an emergency manager. We can't do anything. And we invited him to come in. So as I take my seat, my brothers and sisters, I respect you, young man, Brother Davis, you and I talk. I didn't lambast you when you said you're running against my good friend. I just say keep the dream. <laughs> but look where you are. You, my friend, first war, I stuck with you, sticking with you. Because your present changed the agenda already. This is a history-making night that you all have heard the speakers and then there was a rebuttal, a dialogue. In time past, we didn't hear that nearly. Y'all sat there with y'all on folk. Because your mind was already made up. Your deals had already been settled. So time out for that. I just pray that we come together. And as a citizen of Flint, I'm going to keep, I'm watching you. I'm watching you. And I will be back too. Mr. President, uh, Mr. Mays, I'd just like to say to Mr. Threlkill or Pastor Threlkill, 
Pastor Threll Kale is a member of the First Ward. I work for him. I work for the First Ward. Even though I sit in this seat, I work for the voters and residents of the First Ward. It's not the other way around that I tell them what to do. They tell me what to do. I represent their wishes. I advocate for their legitimate concerns. Now, I will weed that out, and I will decide what issues I go all the way, halfway, and what are legitimate. But what Mr. Threlkill or Pastor Threlkill, I don't know why I keep saying it, I've always said Pastor Threlkill articulated was a legitimate issue. And if he took his five minutes based upon these rules to do that, and I'm his representative, a voice, that's what I ran for, a voice of the people. As we get ready to go to the next speaker, I would say this, Mr. President, and to the five council members that Scott Kincaid now has the presidency. I was here earlier this morning as we were being sworn in. And you might not thank it, but the Lord blessed me with a brain. I used to get all A's and one B and sometime all A's and two B's, but you know, I got a brain. That's my, that's my asset that God gave me and he got me placed here to use it. Might not be the nicest looking person, but I got a brain. I might not know how to act all the time, but I got a brain. So Pastor Thrill Care, what I'm saying to the five that voted that way. Your leader that you voted for said in his statement, and I'll paraphrase, that this was a new council and that we all need to work together. And I did appeal to that five block voting group who wants to wield that power. I appealed to him and said, can we talk about this publicly because I don't know what deals had been cut. Now, just because I use the word deals has been cut, I'm not saying it's illegal, it's just political talk. If you want to work with us or with me, keep us in the loop. And we tried to do that publicly and be a transparent government, and y'all snubbed the four of us and said no. I'll do it every time, and the public, like Pastor Threlkill, is smart enough to see it. Why would the majority of five treat the minority of four where we can't talk about president and vice president in a public arena? The law say that that's when we do talk business. We don't do it behind the scenes, so let's learn from this first vote because our voting records is what we go by. So there's been two voting records made here tonight, if I'm not mistaken. The first voting record, and you judge a politician by their voting record, not what they say, because I've got a council person told me the deal wouldn't be cut till we could talk about it. That was not true. I got a council person that told me something, and I'm like learning my colleague's character, but my point is this. If that was a bad voting record to my constituency, Pastor Threlkill, and I seem to agree, but I'm representing his position as mine, let's put that bad one behind us. Even though it's big, if you want us to show we can work together, you do one or two more of them and you're going to prove to me that you just talking. I believed you, Mr. Kincaid, when you made your statement that you wanted to work together. That's what you said. But your actions, when we wanted to just discuss something before the fact, even Councilwoman Galloway, we're new. She wanted to exercise her 30 days, which I know is in there, because she showed it to me. I didn't know, but I keep reading, Councilwoman Galloway. I tell you what. I've articulated your point, Pastor Threll Kale. I will represent you well. Your concern is mine. And I'm telling you, 
in politics, we're not going to keep begging for equity. I know ways to get equity. So I'm going to put them five on notice. You are going to include us in your talks and negotiations, not only on president and vice, but that's why I want to know about them chairmanships. And I also want to be included, honestly, the in and out flowing of information. Because the president is the spokesperson for the council according to the charter and has a lot of in and out flowing of information. For example, Mr. Kincaid, when they appointed the new chief and I read your spokesperson comments in the paper about the new chief, my comments would have been, the charter say the city council get to approve him, do we? And I'd have been it. Your comments accepted it and gave up your opportunity, but everything I read still might make me make a motion right now to bring the chief before us and see if we can approve it. We need to meet him. Our greatest responsibility or duty in the charter is to inquire. And so guess what? I won't do it in the form of a motion. I would ask that the chief come before this council in the next meeting, and I would do it in the form of a referral to the chief. And if they say the rules is ask the emergency manager, can the chief come, or ask the mayor, but my intent is to bring the chief before us, and so he can give us a public view of his public safety plan, and if he think it's something secret that he want us to know privately that he don't want the crooks to know, then I wait to await to meet with him privately. But it's too important for me to sit here and guess what we're fixing to do. So without any objections, I have you said, I ask that the chief come and present his public safety plan to this council and to the public at our next meeting. And if that meeting is taking too long, at the end of this meeting, I'm going to ask for a special meeting. So that referral is so made. And that all comes from you, Pastor Threlkel. And I hope that that represents your concern. I'll, um, I'll, I'll recognize your referral and ask for a special order so it can be done right at the beginning of the meeting, Mr. Mays. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mr. William Alexander. Mr. Alexander. Good evening, council members. Uh, congratulations to the new members, and I hope we're off to a good start. I come to you this evening to talk about an issue of taxes. First, I would pose a question to you. Would you want your property taxes to be raised without you taking a vote on it? I don't, I don't think it's anyone in here want their taxes to go up without you having to say so. So what I'm going to talk about this evening has to do with taxes it's about our democratic right to vote on our taxes. I have here in my hand, it has to do with the...